This lesson is going to be an example of how we can load content from a JSON file into our HTML using JavaScript and then make an interactive list of items from that JSON depending on what the status is. So the default list where the status for Lawrence is true for HTML5 is true is being represented on the page and once that content loads I can interact with it on the page and that's going to be updating the class values for those elements. If it's active, it's going to be green and bold. If it's inactive, it's going to be gray and lighter font weight. And these are all done with JavaScript. We're going to select the elements, create the elements, and make that interaction happen. In this example, we're going to be creating a list. So first off, let's create our HTML page and linking it to the JS file. So I'm going to be using app6.js as the JavaScript file. I've also created a JSON file that we can use. And this one is just going to contain the data one JSON and it's sitting on the same directory as the JavaScript and the HTML. So it's going to make it really easy to access. So what it's going to be, it's going to be an array. And then within the array, we're going to have multiple objects. And within these objects, we're going to have the name and then this can just be any item that we want in our list. And then also the second value is just going to be status. And this is going to be either Boolean value. So it's going to be either true or false. We'll comma, separate it, and make multiple items that we're going to generate a list from. And let's uh, set this one to be false. And making that list, it's we're going to make it interactive on the page so that the user can toggle the true and the false once the content loads. And you can add as many items and even properties to the list as needed. And let's uh, also set this one to false. So we only have the one that's going to be true. And actually, let's set this one to true. So we have two true, two false. We're going to lo load the content from the list. So let's uh, set up and connect to our JavaScript and connecting to the output element. And create a variable called output and assign that to the documents and then using query selector select the element with a class of output so that we can use it as an object in the JavaScript code. And I'm going to add in a event listener. So listening for the DOM content loaded event. And this is one that is going to get fired off whenever the DOM content has fully loaded. And this is where we can start our coding. So right now for the output, we can add the text content and we'll just output the word ready. So once the DOM content has loaded, we're going to see that the output in the text content is ready. So we want to connect and load the list data. And this is sitting within a JSON file. So let's uh, return that back and we'll create a function that will load the data and I'll just call it load data and then invoke the function when the DOM content has loaded. And that means that we're ready to continue the process of adding to the web page. So using fetch, we're going to fetch over to the URL. So I'm going to set a global object, and this is going to be the path to the data one JSON file. So that if we do need to update it, we can really easily update it. Make the fetch request to the URL. I just threw an error because I don't have a URL there within the fetch request. And this is promise based. So once we get the response back and the response that we're expecting is going to be in a JSON format. And then the next stage of the promise is where we actually get the data. And that's going to be the data that's going to be returned back in a JavaScript object format. So we can then use that data and output a list of items. And for now, what we'll do is we'll just console log the data just to make sure that everything is working properly. So there's our list of the four items within that array. So we're ready to loop through that data. And we'll create a second function. And we can call that add to page. So once the data is ready and it's been resolved, we're ready to add to page. And this is where we can get the array that we're going to output onto the page. Uh, so using the for each, looping through each one of the items, we want to add it to the page. I also want to add in a separate container, so adding in an unordered list, and then query selector, 
And within the unordered list, so this is actually going to be create element, as we're going to create an element. And the element that we're creating is going to be an unordered list, so that we can add the list items in there. I'm going to add in a second output, and that's going to sit within the main container area. And this one is also going to create an element, because we need a way to output content to the user. Uh, so this can just be a regular div. And instead of outputting to output, we're going to output that result to output one. And we want to append them to the page. And let's uh, update that because since that's throwing an error and I have a misspelling there on functions, so that's why it was throwing that error. Uh, so we are looping through and route putting all of those results into the console. And so we're ready to add them to the page. So let's append these elements to the page and then we can add the list items to the unordered list. So taking output and then appending output one. So we have somewhere where we can put the text content and also output and we're going to append the unordered list to output. So that means that we're outputting the ready. And then as we loop through each one of the items, we're going to update and set the status of it. So let's create a list item using the document, create element, and the elements that we're creating are list items. And the content for the list item, so the text content is going to be the result of the value of name. So whatever is assigned to that property value. And then for the unordered list, we're going to append the list item. So that will output them all as list items onto the page. Uh, let's make them clickable by adding an event listener. And the event that we're adding is going to be a click event. And so what we want to do is we want to toggle a class and select the class list from the list item. And actually it should be class list. And toggle the class list of active. And then as we loop through and we add them to the page, we're going to check to see if the element status, and if the element status is true, then to the list item, class list, we're going to add the class of active. So let's take a look at uh, the output of the HTML elements, and we'll see what we've got within the list items. So we have active on the two that are active. We don't have any properties for the class of active. So let's add those in, we'll just do a style tag. And this is going to be the class of active. And for active, let's assign some properties. So we can set the class of active. And setting the color to be green. And set the font weight to be bold. So that way the, we can distinguish between the ones that are active and let's also do one class that's inactive. And this will be the inactive ones are going to be more of a grayish type color. And the font weight is going to be light. So as we go through, and we do have the ability to toggle them, on and off from active, adding active. Uh, so let's also add the inactive class. And to that same list item, we're adding the inactive. And once we click it, we're toggling active. And we can also set to toggle inactive. So that will allow us to toggle the elements that are dynamically loaded from the JSON file and have them active and inactive. And when we look at the list items, they're going to be changing according to the actions and our inactions with that element.